Hi everyone! So today I'm playing with a tile. It's a ceramic tile, I just thought why not. Let's give it a go. I had one lying around and I've seen some other people do it and I, I was intrigued. So it's quite a simple process. It's one of the same processes as I've done before. It's laying down some alcohol inks and alcohol, pure alcohol, on the tile and moving it around with my blow dryer or a an airbrush or a straw and let's see what we can come up with. So the colors I'm using today are green, rainforest green from Pinata and a limeade from Tim Holtz. It's upside down there but you get the gist. I'm going for a garden fill because actually I want this to be in my garden. Um, you can see there I dropped a little bit of silver, but it didn't quite work out, so I didn't pursue it. Um, I framed this at the end, and I think it looks quite good. As I said, it's for my garden, so I want, really wanted a, a green theme. And at the end, I add a little purple. Just, well, it's, it's for my garden, so it's just to match my own furniture. I actually enjoyed working on tile, it was a lot of fun, um, but when I've seen other people do it, they use it as a test piece, you can wipe it off by just applying some pure alcohol on it, and a kitchen paper and swipe it off. Uh, I didn't do that for this piece because I liked how it turned out, and I will probably maybe resin it for my garden just to protect it from the elements, give it a spray paint of varnish first, and then put some nice hard wearing resin on. There I'm adding some yellow from Pinata. And the metallic I think it's it's brass or it could be my rose gold. But I think it's rose gold. It works quite well, I feel. It, it was a lot of fun to do. The colours flowed really well. And I realised at the end that more opaque type of alcohol ink, such as the Piñata range, is most adaptable for this type of medium. I decided to go edge to edge on this piece and not leave much white space as I usually do. So I'm going right to the edges. I'm using some alcohol there just to dilute what's there already. Pushing it in and pushing it back out. And drying the whole thing off before I start another part of the painting. So that's just plain old passion purple from Pinata. And some of my rose gold. 
and then some pure alcohol. I quite like that combination. Greens, yellows and the purple. I've never tried that before. It's not something I would have normally tried unless I was doing a piece specifically for my garden. I like it a lot. I may I may I may do it again on another big piece of Yupo or some of my Lana Van Garde paper. Or even canvas. Or a canvas board. I didn't want too much purple on there, I didn't want to overtake the yellow with the green. So I'm choosing two specific areas in which I use this lovely purple. And it dries really quite rich in colour and it looks quite matte and it's really pretty. And when those inks dry finally, it leaves the ceramic towel leaves a shiny, a naturally shiny gloss to the painting. You almost don't need to add any spray paint varnish in gloss or any resin, but as I said, because it's for the outside, I want to protect it from the elements. I'm going in with a straw here. I'm just having having a little try of to see what this what the straw does. Ultimately, I go back in with my blow dryer. So as you can see, I'm going edge to edge and trying to cover all four corners with colour. And I really would recommend this using tiles, ceramic tiles, on a, with a plain white background. It's a lot of fun. I have another very small piece left. It was in the garage. I couldn't tell you from which project around my house, but I had these two pieces left over. And uh, I'm going to try it again, definitely try it again, see what I can do with it, maybe come up with some other ideas. Can you see that shine? Isn't that lovely? It almost looks like it has already a coat of varnish on. So 
So this is a little bonus in this video. I decided to bling it up as I do. I love my bling. And I'm using something by Pebeo. It's a mixation relief. So it's basically a size, gold leaf size in a tube. It can dry a 3D so sort of thicker or you can leave a really, really thin trail. The trick with this is to leave it um, at least an hour to dry. It takes longer than regular size to dry. Regular size, at least the one I buy, takes only 15 minutes. When it goes transparent like this, you're ready to put your your sheet of um, you can you can use regular sheets of gold leaf, silver leaf. But this is a special type of um, it's a metallic. It's it's not real gold. It's also by the Pebe range. I couldn't find anything online on Amazon, so I couldn't add it to my affiliates list. Sorry about that. You'll have to look online for it or go to your local uh, arts and crafts suppliers. This is just as nice as regular gold leaf, so um, if you can't find it, just use gold leaf. So I'm going to go and get a frame out for you just to show you how it could look framed up and how easy it is. Because of the thickness, you don't actually need the glass or the wooden backing. It clips on and those clips are just big enough for it. And there you go. That's the final piece. I hope you enjoyed this um, piece on ceramic tile, something different. I'll leave you with some close-ups. I wish you all a great week and a weekend. Take good care of yourselves. Lots of love. Bye.